let's stay on Yemen. And of course, there has been speculation on why the presidential jet was made to turn back last week, with some pointing, uh, accusing fingers at different countries. But the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has remained categorical that the presidential jet was made to turn back after security concerns were raised over the airspace in Yemen. And this is where the concern starts. Let me give you a brief basic information about Yemen. There is a war currently going on in Yemen. That war is between government forces and a separat separatist group known as Houthis. Both these two groups are fighting to control the government in Yemen. Now, at some point, Houthis were gaining ground over the Yemeni government and they asked the Saudi Arabian government to help them. Saudi Arabia is the neighbor to Yemen. So Saudi Arabia uh, got a 10-country coalition to launch airstrikes to sort of help the Yemeni government regain gain its control uh, over that particular country. The attacks that have been launched by this 10-country coalition have mainly focused on airstrikes by the coalition forces. If you're a Kenyan and you're aware that your president was made to turn back, this is where the concern begins. Airstrikes by the coalition forces. The presidential jet, this is according to some information that we've received from our sources, is a military jet. It is registered under a military jet. In other words, that means that its code signal is military. This is dangerous for anyone flying in a war zone because in that airspace, anyone who detects this plane will perceive it to be a military jet. This is a war zone. You do not know who is flying in this particular plane. You do not know what the objective is. It could be, a, 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 it could be an em enemy jet coming in to bomb. It could be coming in to spy. You don't know. So. Putting in mind that in Yemen, we have government forces, we have the Saudi-led coalition, and of course you have the Houthis. All these people could perceive this jet as an enemy jet. So on air, the Saudi Arabian-led coalition would bring it down. On ground, these people have no idea who this is. So in other words, both on air and on ground, they would bring it down. Which brings the question, so who plans presidential trips? Presidential tri uh, trips are planned by the military. After they're planned by the ministry, they're run through the NIS. After NIS, they're run through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, of course, for protocol issues. Probably call that country, tell them our president will be, will be flying over your airspace. So in this case, they would call and say, Diplomat 1 will be using your airspace at this particular time, and he will be using this airspace. My concern is here. About a month ago, KTN covered a story of how the government was trying to evacuate Kenyans from Yemen. And this is what we did back then. National stuck in the war on Yemen may soon be home if evacuation efforts by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs go according to plan. Now, the ministry has said it has arranged to have China and Indian naval vessels uh, transport the Kenyans to Djibouti. The Kenyans, however, need to make their way to specific locations in neighboring Oman and Saudi Arabia to get the much needed help out of the war torn country. KTN's Edith Kimani has the details. If the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has a compass, then it's pointed southwest of Asia, specifically at Yemen. It is from this country on the Arabian Peninsula that the Kenyan government, with the help of the Chinese and Indians, will evacuate an unknown number of Kenyans caught in the ongoing conflict. The ministry's plan is already in motion, according to a statement sent to newsrooms. The Chinese and Indian naval vessels are currently in the region evacuating not only their nationals but also those of friendly countries that have requested them to do so. The statement reads in part, those evacuated are transferred to Djibouti for their governments to arrange transport to their respective home countries. Okay, people, that was a month ago. Kenyans who wanted to be evacuated from Yemen was, were told to go to Oman or Saudi Arabia, basically meaning that it was impossible to get them from Yemen. It was too dangerous to get them from there. That was a month ago. And looking at the, uh, the statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the president's trip was supposed to go over Yemen. So even if the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was supposed to coordinate this, it would be very difficult because you have three forces in Yemen. You have the government, you have the Saudi-led coalition, and then you have the healthies. Who was the Ministry of Foreign Affairs going to talk to to enable the president go through their airspace? And that then begs the question, looking at all this background, where Yemen stands as it is, who attempted to fly the head of state over a war zone, 
and why? That is the question that is on the minds of so many Kenyans now. A lot of questions, Linda. Who is it the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Is it the National Intelligence Service? Is it the military? Did anybody try to fly the president's jet over a Wharton area? And who was in, uh, responsible for that? A lot of questions. Yes.